Teams project. Team members are Chan Lee, Becky Miller, and Mohammed Hamid. And I think Chan, you are going to start us off. Is that correct? Sure. Thank you, Sue. I can start. Um, we're all in different places now. <laughs> um, we're all two of us. Our members are traveling. So um, I will actually, Mohammed, um, I will um, share my slides um, just in case your connection is not good. Um, sorry, just give me a sec that I will share my screen and and I think um, Mohammed, you can kick us off. Um, Mohammed, are you online? Sorry, I was not sure whether he's there yet. <laughs> Becky, did you have you received a message from Mohammed? Um, anything? Chan, I don't see that he is logged in. Yeah, I saw him. He's been in and out. I think he said his connection was dropping. Perhaps we should just go ahead with his piece. Um, Chan, if you'd like me to try to wing it, I can. Um, just remind me when you take over um, which slide, and I'll just kind of wing it up until then, unless you'd like to. Sure, sure, Becky, you can go ahead. I think I will start from talking about a method. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for your patience, everyone. Mohammed is actually in Egypt, I believe, and um, I think is understandably maybe having some, <laughs> some connection issues. But um, all right. So we, our title is Open Access Publishing, a study of UC Berkeley faculty views and practices. And um, this was led by Chan Lee, our assessment librarian. And then Mohammed Hamid is our the Middle East Studies Librarian, and I'm the Natural Resources and Environmental Sciences Librarian. Next slide. So um, as a brief outline, we're gonna give you a little background, um, talk about this uh, faculty survey that was done at Berkeley, um, talk about our methods for this study, our findings, um, what, some of the implications and what might be directions for future research. Next slide. Okay, so back, way back, it seems like a, a, a long time ago, um, but in 2018, the University of California system was announcing a major initiative to transform the scholarly publishing industry and has really done a lot to move towards open access through um, different mandates and things like pursuing transformative agreements. Um, and in October 2018, UC Berkeley Library conducted the Ithaca Faculty Survey, and 71% of our faculty respondents um, said that they would be happy to see the traditional publication model replaced by an OA publication system, and this was um, higher than the, the nationwide average for this question. So um, what we wanted to do was use some of these um, views expressed in the faculty survey towards open access and compare them to the faculty's actual open access publishing practices. Uh, next slide. So just a little background from this Ethica survey. Again, this was in um, October 2018. Um, we did see let's see, some dif disciplinary differences um, that um, uh, more faculty in the arts and humanities, especially valued no cost to publish. Um, and um, it looks like more faculty in the life and health sciences valued no cost to read, which you know we're sort of equating with open access, anyone can read. Um, we also kind of looked a little bit at funding. I mean, we're not gonna have a chance in this brief presentation to talk about all the different things we looked at, but um, you can refer to our report for more details. But as far as funding, there was definitely a stark um, difference in the faculty reporting external funding in the last five years. Um, the science, quite a bit more of the science faculty as one might probably expect um, reported receiving external funding. And so that, you know, we wanted to kind of look at that because that might have implications for things like um, paying article processing fees and things like that. Okay, 
Thank you, Becky. So I will talk about our research method. So as Becky said, we're looking, the background is we know the OA, there's a movement there. Um, and we've done this survey study back in 2018. And so the idea is we want to integrate that, the survey data with, those are their perceptions data, data uh, from our faculty. We want to combine that with their actual publication behavior. So we wanted to uh, do a correlation analysis based on what they said in the survey. And then also let's look at their publication, um, publishing behavior from their, based on their publication data. So we basically wanted to combine the two data set. One is the survey data, survey responses, not, not for all of the survey questions, just focus on a few uh, questions related to OA. Um, so that was that one data set. The other data set is that we look at who responded to those data uh, surveys and look at those particular uh, faculties, their publication data from Scopus. So the data would include things like number of publications, the year publications, uh, their reported research funding and others. And, and also we wanna look at their OA publication information and that particular data came from the Unpaywall database. Um, and we, our study primarily focused on the gold OA as this category reflects the strongest intention to publish OA. Um, and then the faculty's opinions, you know, they came from the survey um, and we focused on two questions. One is about the importance ranking on no cost to read and the other is about importance ranking on no cost to publish. So after we got all of the data, we combined the, the two data sets we conduct a correlation analysis by looking at different demographic parameters. So overall, our study includes about 479 faculty. So those are the faculty who responded to the survey. We also got their, uh, their publication data, their OA data. Um, and so in total, we look at their 4,413 published articles over a five-year period from Scopus and, and Paywall database. So this is some, some of the findings, the key findings that we wanted to show you today. Uh, first thing is that we realized there's a large open access output at Berkeley and particularly with gold OA on the rise. So if you look at the pie chart on the left, it shows all kind of OA uh, output dis distribution, including none OA, which is closed. That's the gray area, that's 20, 28%. Uh, 28% which means the rest, 72% are different kinds of OA. It's just depending on how open they are. And then the gold OA represents 18%. Um, so this is really it kind of a surprise to us, um, realizing that 72% of all our faculties, not all, but the faculties in our research um, are all kind of open access. Um, and on the right chart, um, the, the line chart here, if you see the big, uh, thick orange line, those are gold OA publications in terms of number, number of OA um, articles. Um, so those are steadily increasing over the years. Um, 2019 actually has 20% more increase compared to 20, uh, 2016 data. Um, this is also the OA publication, you know, it's not a surprise to us that there are disciplinary differences among the OA output. Um, so like what I said earlier, combining all kinds of OA, like gold, hybrid, bronze, green, they represent 72% of the total publication output, but that percentage varies from discipline to discipline. So for LA, L, LAH's life and health sciences publications, they not only have the highest OA output percentage, which is 78% on the left, and they also actually represent the highest percentage of the total OA output across all disciplines at Berkeley. And that is shown on the pie chart here. Um, the, the life and health sciences, they represent 63 among all of the, um, the OA uh, articles. And arts and humanities here, um, it has the lowest, uh, thirty-seven percent of their um, data, the, the all total articles are are OA open access, and then among all of the total, their percentage even less. It's only one percent. One of the reason is that we have very limited data set for arts and humanities, uh, so that may actually explain some of the lower number that we have. 
but that definitely needs more research on that. Um, this is the correlation analysis uh, results. I won't go into detail explaining what it is, but I would just want to tell you um, the results, the finding based on the data, the analysis we did. Um, I think the overall, when we map their pop, the, the faculty's publication data and their responses to their uh, responses to questions on supporting OA, it shows that the more gold OA articles that they publish, the more support they have for open access publishing, which is you know interesting. Um, when asked in the survey, we asked how important it is, you know, that journal makes its articles freely available on the internet, so there's no cost to read. About 41% indicates it's very important. And also, the people in that group have higher, um, they published higher percentage of gold OA articles compared to the rest of the group who indicate it's less important. And we also correlate their publication data on the gold, uh, gold OA to their responses on the questions about how important it is to um, have no, no cost to publish. So the, um, based on the analysis, we learned that um, the about has, we, we even though Berkeley has this substantial OA output with gold OA increasing, um, but more than half of the faculty are still concerned about publishing uh, publication cost. So this chart shows that the more gold OA the faculty publish, only slightly less concerned they are about publishing cost. So the difference are quite small. Um, the line, you know, it's almost flat. It's not really a negative correlation line here so not it definitely it means that not paying the apc cost is kind of important to to our faculty faculty members and there are also there are disciplinary differences that impact our faculty's publication data and their perceptions on the oa publishing life and health sciences group again they not only have the highest gold, gold oa output they also support open access publishing the most, and they are the least concerned about OA publishing cost. On the other hand, arts and humanities, even though we have very limited publishing data um, on the arts and humanities faculty and go particularly around open access data, but the survey data actually shows that a lot of arts and humanities faculty, they support, go, uh, they support open access. Um, but they are the group who has the most concerns about OA publishing cost. So I think that was also interesting that um, we may wanted to do more research into that uh, arts and humanity areas. And now I will hand this over to Becky. Yes, and I've been told I just have a couple minutes. So going through quickly here. Um, so we our study definitely had limitations. Um, we can't be sure what role Berkeley authors played in the journal selection and whether or not it was their funds that were going towards the APCs. Um, obviously, our sample was heavily biased toward the sciences because we use Scopus and uh, you know, most of the content in Scopus is sciences. And we focused on gold. Ideally, we would also look at things like hybrid articles where the um, authors chose to pay to pay an APC, but we couldn't separate those out um, with on paywall. And there are other um, pro OA behaviors we didn't capture, like posting to academic social networks and things like that. Okay, next slide. Um, but you know, many studies in our literature review, we found that many studies show that support for OA and OA publishing are growing, and our results suggest that Berkeley is above average in both, with the gold OA publishing increasing. And three re recent large studies using unpaywall data found the total levels of OA were less than 50%, and we found 72%. So we feel like you know Berkeley's doing a good job with this. Um, it's probably related to our open access policy, and plus um, a high level of research funding and the funder mandates, especially in the sciences. Um, next slide. So, you know, despite this above average OA publishing, OA is still not a top priority for authors. They still chose other factors as being more important to them when deciding where to publish. So, you know, author motivations are complex. 
Um, but we did find that Berkeley researchers who publish more Gold A feel more positive about it. So experience publishing OA helps. And like others have found APCs may be a barrier and they were a concern for our authors, whether or not they received funding. And so this is a place where libraries can perhaps help with dedicated APC funds and transformative agreements. Next slide. Last slide. So for future research, as Chan suggested, we would wanna find um, other ways to assess the OA scholarly output for arts and humanities and also for the social sciences. Um, and then we would wanna refresh any survey data about OA attitudes. A lot has changed in the last few years and a lot of you know, more attention to OA. So we might expect that attitudes have changed too. Um, we did find that authors of funded articles still request um, library APC funds. So we think it would be interesting to explore Arthur's, authors' practices around using their research funds for paying APCs and you know what, what the disconnect might be there. And um, finally, UC has a lot of recent transformative publishing agreements with you know, a lot of different publishers. And so going forward, we would may wanna monitor what impact that has on OA levels at Berkeley. So thank you. Thank you, Chan, Becky, and Mohammed. And I, I see Mohammed has been able to check back in. So um, let's we'll bring, make sure we bring him in during our questions and discussion. Um, 